pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Commissioner, I'm going to do the roll call. Commissioner Notariani. Uh, Commissioner Cummings uh, has asked to be excused from this meeting. She will join us at the uh, meeting in uh, Moscow this afternoon at 1230. Uh, Commissioner O'Malley. Here. At this time, I'd like to bring this November 2nd, 2017, to 10 a.m. Commissioner's Conference Room meeting about agenda items only and budget presentation. At this time, uh, Commissioner O'Malley, I'm go going to read the uh, 2018 budget message that was prepared for the tentative message, tentative budget for Lackawanna County. But prior to reading the budget message, I would like to announce that the commissioners are continuing to work on the budget on a daily basis, have had several meetings and have more meetings scheduled to delve into this budget, and there will be additional changes made on this budget prior to final adoption on uh, November 15th of this year. We have scheduled an additional public hearing for November 13th in the evening at Glenburn Township at 6 o'clock, where people will have the opportunity, again, to look at any changes that may be made before our final adoption. But for budgetary purposes today, we are presenting the tentative budget that was presented on October 15th, no official changes have been made in that yet, and this budget message will reflect that. This is the 2017 Lackawanna County budget. Let me give funded. the public yes, an sir. opportunity to speak. I'm sorry, sir, yes. Opportunity for the public to address the board. Normally, we read the budget message first, and then we let them speak. Okay, I was but going I'll by the agenda. You want. Yeah. I just know if anybody wanted to speak beforehand and after. Okay. Speak, that that way, that board. way, if there's anything in here that has to be clarified or they have questions on it, they could address it. Sure. This is the 2017 official budget message of Lackawanna County Commissioners. History does repeat itself, especially as it relates to the operation of Lackawanna County government in 2017. The policies enacted and actions taken by the Board of Commissioners have had a significant impact on the area's operating environment. <laughs> Lackawanna County remains on solid ground thanks to the hard work, wisdom, and insights of many individuals. This gave birth to new innovations that impacted the area's economy and quality of life. Several cost-cutting measures also helped to save money. All of this was done by doing more with less. The county's financial stability was fortified through the 2017 bond refunding series, which consolidated debt, saving the county an additional $5.2 million. The practice of completing audits on time has continued, enhancing the county's fiscal standing even more. Economic development remained the focal point of the county's goal of creating opportunities, generating commerce for our businesses, and expanding the tax base. The very popular Community Reinvest Program continued to transform communities by funding a variety of new ventures. In 2017, 36 projects totaling $363,980 were approved, which changed the landscape up and down the valley throughout Lackawanna County. The land bank continues to be successful in generating tax revenue. It has acquired over 100 properties from the city of Scranton, handled a deed lien work on them for a free and clear resale and attempt to get them back on the tax rolls. The side lot program was a success as well with several, several property deeds being awarded to homeowners, others to utilize sites in some unique fashion. The Lackawanna County government project continues to progress and bids will be formally open today at 11.15 a.m. in this room. Designs, bids, contracts, and a host of other documents have been prepared, paving the way for renovation to begin. The goal is to occupy the building by late 2018, signaling the dawn of a new era for downtown Scranton. The county has also taken a giant step forward to protect the well-being of all residents against the opiate crisis by filing a lawsuit against the pharmaceutical companies. To further alert the community of the dangers of this epidemic, a video contest was also initiated by our Lackawanna County Arts Department to help spread the word about the evils of this demon. The Lackawanna County Courts are halls of justice for those requiring legal satisfaction initiated what is known as a unified case management system to share information between the prison, probation department, and other areas as a means of keeping everyone on the same page, preventing the duplication of bookings and other administrative action. Consolidating central court administrative functions and other judiciary departments into a, a one-stop shop format is still being investigated. 
This action, if brought to fruition, streamlines services and save resources. Protecting law enforcement personnel was also done through the approval of equipment and safety grant. The park system is the crown jewel of the county's recreations offerings. This was evidenced with the announcement of the upcoming development of the vacant lot on the lower end of Lackawanna Avenue into a green space called the Riverfront Park. The safety of everyone who uses facilities was kept in mind with the installation of automated external defibrillators, also known as AED monitors. Our arts and culture program does remain as strong as ever through its grant funding Arts in the Park Youth Series Arts Gauge Initiative our debt position of Lackawanna County. While the annual debt service for 2018 was scheduled to increase to more than $21 million, the county was able to garner savings due to a refinancing in 2017. The savings from the refinancing allowed the county, without extending the maturity of any of the refinance bonds, to reduce the 2018 debt service to $19.9 million. The county will continue to be diligent when seeking further opportunities to restructure its long-term debt the continued financial policies of Lackawanna County for 2018. In 2018, this administration will continue to be conservative and demonstrate fiscal responsibility, restraint, and management when addressing the county's financial challenges. The administration will continue its commitment to addressing the constant challenges facing county government on numerous fronts, especially in the area of its workforce, personnel-related expenses, salary, wage, and health care, which comprise 54.1 percent of the county's general fund net of tax transfers out. The important features of the proposed 2018 budget. The 2018 general fund budget includes, and I repeat, no property tax increase. Many man hours went into the preparation of the county's 2018 fiscal blueprint. Its goal is to serve the 214,000 residents of Lackawanna County. This budget reflects no cuts in programs or services that our community and people rely on. This budget also contains provisions for our parks, human service programs, aging initiatives, environment, which spraying for gypsy moths and black flies, along with monitoring for the Zika virus and other elements that matter. We continue to meet the challenges of an ever-changing society by doing more with less in a very fiscally responsible manner. Important features of the 2018 budget include one, funding debt reduction. Two, funding economic development initiatives and infrastructure improvements. And three, continuing funding for the Lackawanna County Library System. It is vital to secure public input on this financial plan. The public hearings are the perfect venue for the public to provide the commissioners with ideas that they can review and implement where possible to help cut further expenses or generate additional revenue. The cost to run county government and its various programs is substantial. A prime example is the Lackawanna County Prison. A great deal of revenue is expended for staff, program, medical treatment, supplies, and other ancillary services. This is part of our mission. We will continue to manage the prison as efficiently as possible. Our reasons for major financial policy expenditure and revenue changes from the 2017 budget. Due to continued pressure from shrinking federal and state dollars, collective bargaining wage and benefit increases, and rising law enforcement costs, the county's 2018 budget will exceed the county's 2017 budget. The human service area will continue to be a hallmark of the programs offered by county government. In addition to human services, emergency response, the court system, and other vital functions will comprise the majority of the county's 2018 expenditures. A budget overview of our 2018 budget. The 2018 general fund budget totals $123,1265. The 2018 capital budget totals $18,041,690, which includes $1,250,000 in infrastructure improvement funds to be transferred from the Lackawanna County General Fund. The, tw the 2018 debt service budget totals $19,917,071. The 2018 special purpose funds throughout the county's budget total $58,220,316. This budget is respectfully submitted and on behalf of the county commissioners in compliance with the Lackawanna County Home Rule Charter and the Third Class Code of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you, commissioners, for allowing me to read that. Opportunity for the public to address the board.
Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Mary Garm. I am the administrator of the Lackawanna County Library System. And I would like to thank you first for your continuing support of the library system. It is um, a, a wonderful service for the residents of Lackawanna County, and we do appreciate your support. I'm here this morning representing the Lackawanna County Library Board. And three of our uh, board members are here with us today. Judy McMahon, Kathy Mazur, and Joan Hodewanitz. Um, earlier this fall, during the budget process, the library system presented you with a request to use funds from the Education and Culture Reserve for capital projects at the Lackawanna County Children's Library. Um, the projects would include such things as mitigation of water infiltration, safety upgrades, energy efficiency, and general renovation. The projects would take place over a period of two years at a cost estimated to be about $189,000. The Library Board was encouraged to make this request following the 2017 budget discussions that indicated education and culture funds would be set aside for the library system for capital projects and other specified uses with the approval of the commissioners. We are hopeful that those funds will be included in the 2018 budget and we're here today to inquire about the status of that request. We'll let okay. everybody speak. I'm sorry? We'll let it, we're going to let everyone speak first. Then no. Okay. Um, anybody want to speak? Um, I'm Joan Hodewan, and so I'm also on the uh, county's library board. Uh, let's take a look at the children's library, a building that is 102 years old and that the county purchased in 1987. So it's county-owned property, not city-owned property. Um, when it was originally purchased, it had its initial renovations to convert it from the Christian Science Monitor facility into a children's library facility. Um, but the building is getting older, and when we say we want to do water remediation, we got water leaks. We have a history of water leaks, and what we don't want is to end up with the mold problem where we have to do, do mold remediation. As expensive as it might be, you know, to um, do these water prevention renovations, it has nothing like what you're going to see in terms of a bill if we have to do mold remediation. On top of that, we would have to probably close the building for repairs because you're not going to expose staff employees and children to mold. You're just not going to do it. Some of the renovations that we're asking for involve basic safety measures. I don't know how aware you are of this, but you know, libraries are a wonderful place for people to go in and hide, especially homeless people. And we need some of our back entrances that are automated to be renovated so that we, we can ensure that this doesn't happen. You just try to hide in those stacks and you know what I'm talking about we, you know we don't want this and, and it's a warm place to hide in the winter as is the Scranton Public Library um, they're open to the general public all the time but we also have to have some kind of uh, control of them just little things like the front doors of the children's library they're very very heavy they're much like the old doors at the entrance to St. Peter's Cathedral it takes a relatively strong adult hold them open and close them properly. Imagine a small child, five or eight years old, getting banged on the hand. And imagine the fact that, you know, we will be liable if any child gets hurt. Um, there are other things. The energy efficiency upgrades we want to do. I talked to Jack Finnerty, who's the director of the Scranton Public Library yesterday, and he said to me, when they changed over the Albright Memorial Library from the old type light bulbs to the LED light bulbs, their electric bill immediately went down by 25%. So a lot of the things that we're asking for in terms of these renovations are either things that will pay a refund down the road like energy efficiency or are common sense things that need to be done so that we don't have a major bill with either a lawsuit from somebody getting hurt or a, a mold problem from water leaking into the basement and we have a history of that 
So that's the kind of things we're asking for. This is not, let's put up Christmas lights and, you know, paint the inside of the library in psychedelic colors. Everything we're asking for has a good reason. Thank you. Thanks, John. You see, you should have thought better when you put me on the library. <laughs> 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 it was a good decision. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I'd like to thank Tom Durkin and Kevin Mitchell for a great job they've done on our budget. All of our directors, deputy directors, for living within their within their budget. You know, it's um, it's not easy. We're trying to make sure that we don't increase taxes, and um, you know, people just can't afford it. Families can't afford it. Um, we are going to be having a few more meetings before the budget is finalized, so we will definitely this will be on the radar for the. 189,000 for the roof and the, the project that you're looking at for the children's library. So we'll make sure that that's brought in front of the other the three of us when we'll be able to conduct our next two, three budget meetings. Okay? Anyone else? Commissioner Notary? Go ahead, John. We'll do this one. Last time I talked about the budget, um, I had gone through the document. And the general fund is $123 million, that budget. But if you look at page 51, the revenue grant total is $242.3 million, expenses $219.1 million, uh, with the net surplus of $23.1 million. Okay, now you take out uh, $20.6 million, which I think was um, part of that projected surplus that you've been hoarding there's at least a 2.5 million dollar surplus in the grand total of the budget yet the general fund has an imbalance how are you going to uh, uh, balance your general fund with all the other funds because the overall budget has a surplus of 2.5 million dollars yeah remember you mentioned that to me and you said all oh, those numbers were at the back here and I looked again at this budget Tom, message, like to which that? Andy read. So how do you balance that? I mean, if I may, um, as Andy said, I think before he read the budget message, the commissioners and the budget and finance people have been working on that and, and working on trying to get the general fund budget balanced. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to work toward getting the general fund budget balance. Now, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, Joan. No, you're not, because this, this figure at the page 51 includes the deficit in the general fund. Correct. So what I want to know is, you, you know, as you put it out in uh, mid-October, the overall budget has a $2.5 million surplus, okay? Okay. What are you going to do with that $2.5 million surplus? Much of that $2.5 million surplus is dedicated funds that can't be used for general purposes. I mean, pardon me? Debt service. The debt service fund is one. Uh, the, uh, the debt service got a line item in here? The debt service is more than a line item. The, debt, the actual debt service budget is included in there. Well, all I know is when you get to the last page and you give me a grand total of revenues exceeding expenses, the actual figure here is $23 million, but I've taken out $20 million because I know you had that surplus the fund that balance, you set that's correct. aside. Mm -hmm. But that still leaves you with $2.5 million. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I know a worthy library that could use some money, uh, among other things, but still. I, you know, I mean, I understand, you know, that your focus is the general fund because that's your operating revenue and your operating expenses. I understand that, mm -hmm. okay? But I want I want to track where that $2.5 million is going to go. I want to make sure that that's clearly transparent when you finalize the budget. Well, it certainly will be. And again, I'm not going to, to pretend to be able to tell you off the top of my head what each of the separate funds um, uh, surplus or, or deficit would be in the budget. But, but funds outside the general fund, for example, the library fund is one of them. Yes, it's the, a special fund. Th that's correct. Arts and the, culture is a special fund. That's correct. The um, uh, domestic relations fund right. is a separate fund. Right. Um, um, the 911 fund. Yeah. 
is my a separate question, fund. My basic question is, will page 51, the overall, the total revenue and the total expenses, once you've tweaked your budget at the end of all of this entire process, will that be balanced or will there be a surplus or a deficit? N not necessarily. And, I mean, maybe the best example I can give you, Joan, is the 911 fund. For, and I'm going to give you a little history, it'll be brief. Mm -hmm. uh, up until 2005, the 911 fund required a subsidy from the general fund every year. At the time, it was approximately $750,000. Beginning in 2005 and through 2009, the state of Pennsylvania began rolling out what's known as wireless 911. Prior to that, if somebody on a wireless uh, a cell phone um, made a 911 call, the 911 dispatchers weren't able to locate where the call came from because the technology wasn't there yet. Beginning in 2005, Lackawanna County actually was an early, uh, uh, early in in the, the wireless 911 program. Between, we hired a consultant in 2005 who knew a lot more about wireless 911 than we did. And as a matter of fact, between 2005 and 2009, our 911 fund was able to derive enough revenue from the, the wireless program that we were able to offset all expenditures in the 911 fund and we didn't have a uh, general fund subsidy between 2005 and 2009. By 2009, uh, most of the other 67 and what they're, they're called PSAPs, the 911 agencies um, in the state of Pennsylvania were on board and, and moving toward uh, wireless um, 911. Uh, since everybody else was on board, the state's war chest of money that had been hundreds of million do millions of dollars at one point, because they started collecting funds from the wireless providers in the early 90s and built up a war chest so they would have enough money to roll out wireless 911 when they got to it. Uh, beginning in 2010, they didn't have enough money to fund all of the wireless requests that were coming in. So uh, I don't remember the exact numbers. In 2010, we requested, I think, four and a half million dollars from uh, the state through Pima to fund our 911 system. They approved the entire allocation. However, they told us, because we don't have enough money, we can't fund the entire allocation. So we were approved for about four and a half million. We got about 3.4 million in 2010. So beginning in 2010 until 2016, I believe, um, the county was again subsidizing 911, sometimes as much as a million or, or a million and a quarter dollars a year. In 2016, the state and Pima changed the way that they fund 911 programs. And we've been fortunate in as much as the Lackawanna County 911 program kind of meets the, the criteria that the state has established to get us more funding. And, and so that's good. In 2016 and again in 2017 and again in the 2018 budget, We've actually had surpluses in 911. In 2016, the county had approximately $800,000 of surplus in 911. That would be reflected in the 2000. Well, you don't have 2016. In 17, I think we've anticipated about three quarters of a million dollars of surplus in 911. Those funds have to be dedicated to 911 and 911 projects. One of the projects that our 911 operations is working on is something that's very desirable by the state, regionalization. They would prefer not to fund 67 PSAPs any longer. They want to do regionalization so that potentially, and I don't know what the number is, maybe they want to get it down to 10 or 15, but they don't want to fund 67 separate operations because it's more expensive if you have, you know, a, a single director and 30 employees per PSAP in 67 different locations rather than having 15 of those. So you can cut down on a lot of expense. The whole point being that we have budgeted a surplus again in 2018 that we can't take out of 911. It has to sit there as a surplus. 
and I'm not sure the library fund is another example. I'm not sure if we've we budgeted a surplus in the library fund for 2018 or not, but it's it's in the the budget. But it's another fund that if there's a surplus, and there has been over the last four or five years, I think we increased the uh, the uh, dedicated library tax in 2012, I believe, yeah. and and those surpluses have to stay within those funds. Yeah. So we can't offset a deficit in the general fund by pulling money from the 911 right. fund well, the library fund. What you could do then for the general public, the general taxpayer, is you know at the end of your document, page 51, where you do have this revenues exceeding expenses, have a footnote and saying the reason that you know uh, revenues exceed expenses is because we have a need to uh, keep keep surplus funding in X, Y, and Z accounts uh, due to historical expenditures, whatever. A little explanation because it begs the question when you look at the general fund and there's a deficit and you get to the last page there's a surplus and you, and you want to know, well, why can't you balance the budget? I'm just saying. I understand your question. You know, I mean, all it takes is a well-crafted footnote explaining you know, and, and we will not use this $2.5 million or whatever the number might be, you know, um, to, you know, uh, fill the deficit in the general fund because we have historical and legal and whatever reasons that these surpluses have been built into the special funds. That's all. But when I look at it, I want to know why the numbers don't match. Understood. I can do math. Understood. Okay, and I know how to use a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Well, okay. Thanks, John. <laughs> Commissioner Terry, any? Uh, well, I too would just like to thank our staff uh, for, for doing a, a good job. Uh, the government does go up. There's no question about it. So it is always a uh, a chore to uh, a task to uh, to try to get these as close to the, to, to being balanced as we possibly can. And I'd like to thank John for. Uh, enlightening us and how to uh, maybe make it a little bit clearer for everyone. Uh, but thank you and that's all I have. Joan, I'm glad you're on the library board. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe I'll be taking that back. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Thank you.